Hello and welcome to our group design project. We chose to design a UAV drone. Um, when researching the drone, we basically concluded that it was superior to current technology for search and rescue because it's faster, it's cheaper, and also you can operate it in closer proximity to the casualty at low altitudes. Um, its main aims are to reach the casualty quicker than a standard search and rescue team, relay a GPS signal to the ground team, and um, just overall reduce the response time. Um, we were looking to deploy this in the Alps, and we were looking to make it marketable to search and rescue teams such as PGHM that don't currently have access to drone technology. Some existing models of drones include um, the quadcopter, um, which is great, it can carry um, the, the type of payload that is required in a search and rescue mission, however, standard models such as this don't have a very long flight time, 25 minutes would be insufficient. Um, this is again seen with the Phantom 3 Professional. It can carry a 4K camera. Um, it can go uh, at 60 meters a second, which is not quite fast enough. However, it can reach 6,000 meters, which is a, an appropriate altitude for what we were looking at. Um, however, again, its flight time of 23 minutes just isn't suitable. Uh, another existing product we looked into was a fixed wing drone, which um, has a low price, also has many features that can be added, such as a flare camera and a 360 camera and it has a very long flight time, although its disadvantage is that it doesn't have a vertical take. Then we also looked into a single rotor drone, which, has, which also has a really good flight time, and it has a very high max speed and altitude, although its disadvantage is that it's too big. So when we were looking at the functions of the drone, arguably the most important one is actually finding the person under the avalanche. But in order to do this, we need to split it into several categories so we can really get down to the levels that each component of the drone does. So this can then be split into three subcategories, which is flying to the site, finding the person and relaying the information to the base. But after that, of course, it has to split down further. So for example, with flying to the site, it has to be split down into both its speed and the steering because both the speed and the direction are important. With this, it's set by the operator. So we don't actually have to have any kind of automatic control as part of it because it's basically being done by a remote control. However, things like proportional integral derivative control are useful for more accuracy in movement and less error in where it's going. And also for some types of drone, but not the quadcopter, the angle of the drone can be adjusted using servo motors driving the ailerons. So these are our requirement specifications for our drone. These are mainly based on the physical properties that include how it should be stable in its flying so it doesn't crash into stuff and it should be able to run for a specific amount of time because people start dying in avalanches at around 45 minutes. It also needed to be able to be compatible with current transportation so that it wouldn't affect the other planes that were flying around the terrain. It must also be controllable in winds above 25 knots, so any extreme environment condition. After doing the House of Quality, we have seen that the main, well, the most important customer requirement is that the drone should be, should have a reasonable cost, it should do its work, which is finding people in the avalanche, and it should perform reliably. Also, the least important customer requirements we have found through House of Quality is that it, um, it should, well, should be visible against snow, the drone, and it shouldn't cause harm to further casualties. And also local storage of camera recording. Uh, the most important function requirements were to maximize the UAV time in there. As you said before, uh, 25 minutes isn't enough. Then uh, it should uh, be able to remotely send information to the SR team uh, as quickly as possible. And furthermore, it should be mechanical re uh, mechanically re reliable in extreme weather. Uh, the least important ones were to function under 20 degrees because that's quite unlikely, and to be compatible with current transportation has have to be adapted easily. Uh, moreover, it should be, well, uh, to deal with fog isn't really that important, just it already has flare uh, cameras. As you can see, the first concept has a high uh, wind volume surface area, which can be very useful as it, when it means that we don't need that much battery use, as it could glide instead of using only motors. Furthermore, the gliding is very useful in case the motors stop working, it could glide to a safer spot. Uh, however, it is quite hard to reverse as it isn't, it, at it, as it isn't a quadcopter. Um, it has uh, many room in the body for cameras and uh, all, all devices which we will need. Uh, and its aerodynamical shape means it, it's faster than a normal drone. Okay, 
Great. Concept2 has a large volume to surface area, which means a lot more devices can be added inside the body. And also it has two propellers, one which can control the vertical direction and one with the horizontal direction, so it's got a lot more control in its movement. Also, the feet on the bottom mean that it's a lot more stable when it lands, and the propeller on the top means it can vertically take off, which is a lot better for a mountainous environment. Our third concept design was the quadcopter. These are really good for mobility because they have four blades, which makes them really easy to fly over the mountain terrain. They also function really well in congested and restricted areas because they can take off and land from pretty much anywhere. One of their main flaws is that they, when they hover, they take up a lot of power and they also have really high downdrafts, which can cause a secondary avalanche. But other than that, they're really good and they've got stable feet for landing without damage. Concept 4 is a VTOL plane loosely based on a Boeing Osprey. This means it has lots of room for equipment, it has two blades to allow for good rotation, and can rotate upwards to allow for good manoeuvrability, as well as reversing, which is a flaw of normal winged aircraft. The main body has a larger volume to surface area than other designs, which means it can have a larger battery storage capacity, but no fixed landing gear may make it difficult for landing or takeoff, but there is the possibility of having landing gear hidden inside the body during the flight. Concept 4 was chosen as the final design. Its fixed wing design is more resistant to high wind conditions, up to 30 mile an hour winds, which we are experiencing in the Alpine regions that the drone would operate. The plane fuselage also allows for greater battery storage and for more camera systems or peripherals. The VTOL capability means it has the same versatility when landing as a quadcopter or helicopter drone, but the wings allow for gliding, which increases flight time and also allows for emergency manoeuvres in case of engine failure. The VTOL planes are also faster than quadcopter designs, allowing them to reach a target quickly.